two, episode two of the uh, Scottish Power Podcast. Tonight I have with me the uh, oh Jesus, I forgot your team's name. <laughs> Stuart, what's your team name? Paranormal Exploring UK. <laughs> Here we go. Do you know what was that paranormal paranormal? Oh no, I, I can't I can't get a second part. We get paranormal exploring UK <laughs> here with us. Um and tonight we have with us on the show you've got yourself, Stuart. Oh. Heather Raymond. Uh, come on, the camera's not what it's kept to you, get Heather. Huh? Here we go, Kerry. We have... Hey guys. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we do have another one of you. We have Scott. Scott's currently cooking or making a cup of tea, we're not sure. But yeah, so... Obviously, we'll get him to introduce himself further than the line. So, guys, thanks for coming on. Um, obviously, this being the second one, Rigger had to back out. He, he's a wee bit worse for wear every day. He was out last night having a drink. So, aye, he's, he's left it to me. One man on me. I was having these day, uh, day being anyway. I'm just dying to get into my beer, to be honest with you, so let's kick on with it, Dabber. You should have brought it on the show, it'll be fine. I know. Uh, I know, why didn't you bring it? <laughs> just have a beer there. I know. For the first time this year, I've taken the boy up and gave him a wee kick about a Fitba, so, and I'm paying for it now. I've done my groin in and everything in my heel, but I thrashed him, that's the main thing. Jesus! <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> And obviously, hell, you've had a time out today as well. You've been up at the hospital, haven't you? I think she's yeah. froze, but it looks it. Yeah. She's ran away. <laughs> what about you, Samantha? What are you and Adrian doing today? Travelling down to England to explore a few abandoned buildings over the next couple of days. Oh, yeah. yeah. Imagine abandoning the team to go out investigating yourselves. We've not stole all the fuel. We have, I, I can see a few jerry cans sitting in the back there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah we've... <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get to work tomorrow and I can't get a <laughs> few. I'm all right. I'm off for a September weekend. It's great. Oh, lucky you. <laughs> I know. But yeah, so obviously we're regular not being here tonight. It's, it's kind of through me a wee bit, but. We'll persevere. I'll obviously we'll have a wee chat chat, fire in some questions. Usually get anything you want to ask me since Rigger can't come and defend me. Fire away. <laughs> obviously I'll answer as best as I can for you and hopefully hopefully this will go well for us. So obviously Stuart, you obviously run the team, but see he's like an individual. How long have you actually been doing it yourself? And obviously to rest of you, how long you've all been doing it? Well, I've been having uh, experiences my whole life, really, from when from my earliest memory. Uh, being a toddler, still in nappies, and uh, running down the, the hall in my wee kind of toddler bike thing. And I get the sudden feeling that eyes boring into the back of my head, something is watching me here. And it wasn't until years later that we discovered that house. We only lived in it six months. And we had to go to it because there was a poltergeist or something and there was stuff, right. there was just things happening all the time. So as I was growing up, certain things has happened. Uh, I can remember sitting on my dad's knee and asking him what year it is. And he said, what year is it next year, 1980? I started shaking and quivering and creating, crying. He says, we were going, well, there's a war, we were going to be in a war. And I seen a war and then... Thought nothing else of it. And a year later, when it happened, I seen the news and it was the warships going to the, the Falklands. And I just got that wave of dread again. I, that is what I seen. I actually seen that. So it's a clairvoyant kind of episode. Yeah. Uh, the house is full of spirits as well. Apparently, there's six spirits in this house, but I well, thought he shot in Balna a couple of years ago telling me to pay their council tax. And they've not really, which I shouldn't have done, they've hardly been back. Well, so it's all right, you know, say, that, there, was somebody, there was either a ghost at your door 
oh, there's some guy in your house, because I seen him moving at the door. <laughs> <laughs> there's a black shadow keeps coming down the stairs there actually I so right but I think I hear I think I hear I'm sure I hear the boy out there so it's probably him right okay but, uh, as I say I'm going to attack you I so through my whole life uh, I've known <laughs> that I'd be doing something to do with this at some point and it was just last year uh, over the Christmas holidays I thought that's it. Something else happened. I can't remember what it was. There's that many. And I thought, that's it. I'm, I'm submitting now. I've got to do something like this. So, And I started the wee group myself. It was just me and the, the two daughters. Yep. And uh, it's just evolved. You know, this past five or six months into these other lovely people here who we've met on, on Explores with yourselves. Yeah. And I've kind of I've kind of leached them off you and I got them for myself, you know. Well, we need to give some of the investigators away. <laughs> but I mean, that's the story. So I've always known it would happen, uh, yeah. and it finally has. So, but we've had nice. some real good, good, ex- good explore. So I'll put it on to well, the next one. Twenty-one years of your life. <laughs> First twenty-one years is always the best to say. <laughs> well, maybe you, Kerry. How long have you actually been in, like doing your investigations? Well, I've not been doing it long. That was um, my daughter, Samantha and Adrian, who I kind of went along with them. When I met you guys, that was the first time that I'd actually done an investigation uh, when I met you guys. So it's pretty new to me. Um, What it was with myself was um, I quite enjoy going around abandoned buildings, so that's why I went with Samantha. And also, I lost my mum last year, unfortunately. Mm. She passed away quite suddenly. So I think ever since then, um, I've had a real drive, if you like, to get in touch with the sort of spirit world. Um, I'm, I, I'm like Stuart as well. I've had this sort of connection I suppose if sort of sensitivity to um, the spirit world since I was little as well um, I didn't really pay much attention to it I've had things in the past like orbs I've seen um, apparitions I've seen sort of shadows I've seen I actually seen an angel sort of in the shape of a baby uh-huh. Um, when my daughter was little and so I have seen various things w- within my lifetime but yeah. I didn't really think about it too much until my mum obviously passed away so that's really what has made me sort of get into it more and try and understand it a bit more so yeah. Um, that's thanks to my, my daughter as well, obviously, because I've been exploring okay. with her and Adrian. So it's it's great. I absolutely yeah. love it. It's like very addictive. It um, can be, I can't yeah. get enough of it. it um, how about you, Heather? <laughs> uh, well, myself, I've always been, as you say, sensitive. Um, oh. And I was, I didn't, I, I knew Kerry <laughs> through horses. But I didn't know her through paranormal or uh, through exploring and I was drawn to them and I got in touch, I, I reached out to them on Facebook um, and basically offered my services. Um, I'm, I'm a practice medium at the minute but um, like I say I've always been sensitive to spirit um, and going back to what Stu was talking about having you know, things coming to me either in a dream. Um, uh, one vivid, very vivid one for me was, I was in Germany on my honeymoon uh-huh. and I had a dream of a man sitting in a chair and he told me he hadn't been stabbed, that he was from cow and beef no. and that the people that stabbed him were two streets back. And he told me his name and I seen his face very vividly. And it kind of spooked me. But when we got back from our holiday, we got back and we put the 10 o'clock news on. It was kind of on in the background. I told my husband about it and it came up on the news that Fife Police Scotland were opening up this investigation about this young man that had been stabbed in mm. cow and beef. 
and it really shook me. So uh, yeah. it's just things like that. I, I used to be really frightened of what I had. Yep. My ability. I've seen spirit develop in front of me. I've had feelings and connections with people and I kind of run away from it because I was scared. I wasn't ready for it. But now I am and I embrace it. And I want to learn more. And I just totally adore coming out and being in the environments that we go to. It's amazing. I love it. So that's me. <laughs> one, Samantha, if, you, if you're still with us here, since she's up the vibe. Yeah, yes. So here. Yeah, I'm how long have you and Aidan actually been doing this? Obviously, obviously, we have met these a couple of times now put on like investigations. But how long have you actually been out investigating together? Well, I've had an interest in paranormal since I was quite young, and um, because I used to stay at my friend's house when I was in school, and her house was quite haunted, and we used to experience all this crazy stuff from like babies crying and cats the wall, the footsteps, then you get shocked. And then um, it kind of like gave me an interest where I wanted to find out more. And that's when I started like watching stuff on YouTube and I'm like, wow, you can actually explore abandoned places as well. So when I was about 15, that's when I really got into like abandoned places. And then I met Adrian at college and um, we both had the same interest abandoned places. So we started exploring abandoned places and also seeing some paranormal stuff in the process because the majority of like houses and other places we go to do have spirits in them. Yeah. So um, that, that's how I got into all that. No, that's cool. Like obviously going down that line, like I've been I've been around kind of houses that have been haunted since I was I was about four when my mum looked after my grand and papa and they both passed away in the house that I spoke about it in the last um, podcast I'd done. But like, they both haunted that house. We moved to other houses, they've been haunted by people. It's It's been one of the things that's just kind of followed me pretty much my whole life. Obviously, I started at the start of lockdown to kind of go out doing my investigations. And obviously, it's just kind of staying there for, there for me. But like I, I get where I've they come from. It's like it's like a, a drug. It's like an addiction. Once you start, you don't want to stop. And and once you start getting like the whole like whole communication, you don't want it to stop. But you also don't want to be draining the spirits of everything that's going on around them. It's 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 really hard to explain at times, but. Um, but yeah, so we're about to see he's going to explore in England. What part of England? Um, we're going towards the Peak District, and then um, we're also going to be heading Wales as well. Jesus. If only you could just pack out the car like that every weekend, eh? Ah, come away, don't go and investigate this kind of place. I see he's in a few days. My message is not kill me. Cutting away there. That sounds good. I hope you I hope they find some some good stuff down there. I hope the one that they're going to is still opened as well. Okay, John. Yes, open. Traveling all that way and then getting in the places I looked, it's nothing worse. I mean you can travel and move along along the road and the place is shutting you like, oh, what am I going to do, man? Where am I going to go now? But imagine traveling six hours down England and going out of those look. It's not as if you can just turn them into your game. Especially if you just get shut up the day like before. <laughs> Sam will probably have a, a wean of uh, 
different places because she oh, always I... does. I can't believe how much places she finds. I don't know how <laughs> she does it. I really don't. You know, <laughs> Um, so, I'm just kind of having, oh, what's going on here? Awesome, I fear connections kind of low there. Yeah, it's because we're traveling on the motorway, so I do apologize, I'll cut off sometime. No, that's all right, don't worry about it. Um, so, Stuart, obviously you're kind of a ringleader of your team. What's your most used bit of equipment you guys use when you're out? We tend to use, first of all, we tend to, tend to start with just our senses. You know, I quite like that. See if you can hear anything and whatever else. But what has been the popular one, there's a cracking story I'll tell you about the blind spirit box. Yep. Now, none of the guys was with me and my daughter at this time. Uh, we met another couple of our friends who were joining the team and they've opened their own, started their own business, so they've no time at the moment. And uh, <clears throat> we met them at Caldwell House. It's maybe the start of the spring there. Yep. And they were, they're very keen explorers. And as soon as I mentioned, I've got my kit, we, oh no, no, we can't be doing any of that stuff. I'm crap myself. We can't, I'm, I'm not feel comfortable. This is, really isn't nothing if you just, Throw away what you've seen on uh, Hollywood films. It's nothing like that. So, but eventually, yeah. as we all know, uh, it's Caldwell House, you get doing the basement and in that wee dark room. Yeah. And as soon as I walked in there first, they got, I got a half brick launched at me and I turned around and the two girls put their head in the window, in the, in the door and says, What? I said, I don't know. A brick or something got tossed at me there. She says, I heard that. So, right, okay. So I've volunteered for the Blind Spirit Box. Now, I've tried to tell this story on a, a separate video to put on our YouTube channel. Yep. And twice I've tried it, the twice my computer's crashed. So as if... It was... right, so go ahead and all crash mine because it's not going to run very well here. <laughs> so if it happens a third time, we know it's definitely not meant to be told. But anyway, Hi. I was on the, the Spirit Box, blindfolded, headphones in. And blah de blah, and they were asking questions and stuff, and I was just repeating what I could hear. And I heard in my left ear, a oh, distance away, help! I thought, okay, why is it not? It's not in my two ears, so that must be something. And then I repeated another couple of names, and it was like, ouch, that's sore. And then the last one I heard was uh, smart. And at that point, I was sweating and too hot, and that was me at the end of it. So when I when I showed the girls that night the video, they said, that is pretty interesting. She showed it, her, her mate seen it on her, her Facebook page. And I think it was just a kind of a Facebook video that we'd done. We've not done a... But anyway, her mate says... Have you not heard about that place? That's actually, that's amazing what the evidence you got there. She's like, how, what's, what's happening? She says, well, the ouch and the, and the pain and all that stuff. A guy, apparently, well, it's in the news, it wasn't apparently. It's in the Daily Record, you, you can look it up. I've read it. The guy get kidnapped. It. Guy get kidnapped there and he get beaten within a, a, a millimetre mm -hmm. of his life over a drug debt or something. Yep. And one of the guys, the guys, one of the guys who done it was called, surname was called Smart. And he yep. Can, can wow. I just watch two of you minutes? Sorry, somebody's at my door. They bother. <laughs> no, I never goes to plan on these things. <laughs> it's funny. And it's strange that just came from the blind spirit box to you. And that's why I don't like researching into a place too much before I go there. Because then you're already... Mm -hmm. Expecting to yeah, hear you. Know. That's why I don't like people telling me anything. Aye. If I do a reading aye, aye. for somebody, don't tell me anything. Aye. Because if you tell me something, then you know. So it was that feeling of of awe and, and shock, really, getting the next day mm -hmm. and looking up for yourself, and you're like, 
that's the stuff I was saying, man. I couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So you sometimes yeah. think that the, the spirit box is just flicking through radio frequencies and blah, blah, blah. It's, you're going to, but this particular day was bang on, man. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe the results. Yeah, we we actually had his name come through as well when we done it one of the times. Um, there was also a wee girl that we communicated with when we were there one night, and it turned out she was a little girl that got lost in the woods and died. Right. Um, so obviously that was quite an interesting one that night. Like, that whole night we had, had a fair bit of activity. Right. Like, we had uh, motion sensor balls out. Right. And they kept getting off and kept getting off my lap. And so much activity. Turned out it was a mouse that kept knocking the ball. But we couldn't <laughs> see this mouse. But we had um a camera guy that had come out that night. He had like, we started cameras for catching wildlife and the mouse would pass the camera and then it the ball and obviously he's like, Well, where you go that debunks why that's happening, well, that will, that's absolutely fine, but at least we know that it's no paranormal it's causing it it's just a mouse but Cogdwell is just full of activity um, there's a bit about a mile away from it and it's just like a well or something like that um, as well that that's might have a bit of activity because um, we spoke to the guy that stays there and obviously he's right. gave us a lot of information on the place kind of felt us in a bit more about it I mean, when me and my daughter were there the last time, the time after that, just to show her as well, it was the time before, I think it was the time before that, this white BMW appeared and went, oh, no, here we go, man, we're rumbled. But it was a woman who lives just in the gatehouse. Aye. She ended up coming down ways. She's like, oh, I'm interested in this, come on, doing, but nothing, nothing happened. But She's really uh, interested. The husband's a caretaker, uh, a mortician. He's not as big on it, but like obviously he's seen us there a few times and he's like, ah, look, is there any way we could maybe come along one night with his well, ah, by all means. I mean, gave him a number and all that. Well, ah, if you ever want to come out, contact us. We'll come down, we'll take you in. We'll obviously show you what we do. But we've never heard back from him. Well, it transpired when she was down there talking to us that day. I used to be a funeral director for 14 years in various companies. And one of the companies I worked with in Glasgow, Glasgow, Glasgow. Uh, her uncle gave me the job, so there you go. That's there you go, job. eh? Small world. Small world. Aye. Small <laughs> world. Um, Try to think. Going so, back to the going back to the um, favorite equipment. The balls are my favorite. Like the yeah. motion balls are amazing. They really are. I'm glad you mentioned the motion balls there. Aye, rather than just the balls. <laughs> No, oh, the, the sensor <laughs> balls do get so much activity. Like, they're brilliant. Yeah. Um, like we have used them for <laughs> various kind of experiments, whether it be a yes no kind of answer. Um, like, kind of, was, was this your home or was it not? And just they kind of things. It's, it's so, they're so good to use, I find. Um, well, we we were in a place I can't remember who it was, but we just constantly get answers using just the sensor balls. We didn't need spirit boxes. We didn't need a yes no device. We just used them, and for all the cost, they're so great to have on you. I think the spirit as well. They like the motion balls a lot of them, especially yeah. when it's kids. Or... Ah, uh -huh. um, especially as you say. Especially for kids, they seem to see it more as a wee toy. Obviously, it lights up, it flashes for them, so it's something for them to play with. There'll be a day where you put a, a sensor ball down, and that thing will get picked up and launched across the room, and you'll just see me running straight after out the door. I saw that. <laughs> Why? Um, <laughs> I know. Why, sorry, on you. No, you go, mate, fire in. I've said it's, it's been a thing the past summer. That we've been at most of our places where we go to now, we're getting something chucked at us at some point in the. I mean, maybe just chucking at you. Maybe, maybe, yeah, oh. that clown again. <laughs> the thinking's good, but you. 
Uh, they've been <laughs> a few very active. But anyway, we're going to hear that. See what her favourite. I, I was. I was just waiting to say that there. <laughs> I like I like the um you know that meter that, that goes up the K two meter aye and it lets you know you know that spirit's there yep. um although half the time I know he's there anyway or she's there <laughs> <laughs> I do like it. It, it almost like confirms to me what I'm sensing and that um that it's it's, it's real um I, I've only been on like two investigations uh, the first one was really really good thoroughly enjoyed it at the aviation house and uh, the second one was at the I forget what it's called the sanatorium oh, uh, lennox, castle. lennox castle no i where i, I took <laughs> i was maybe slightly like over safe that night I took my sage took my <laughs> my, my rock soul my soul and we really didn't get very much that night at all, did we, guys? Lennox, I um, think. <laughs> so, I, um, I, I'm looking forward to our next one. Um, I'm just kind of like getting to know everybody and and and, and the equipment that you use. I ha actually didn't know that half the stuff you use existed, <laughs> if I'm being honest. I have an intuition. I didn't work on we like we balls lighting up and stuff <laughs> like that, but it, it really has been interesting and opened my eyes. Yeah, you obsessed with the balls eventually, Helen. You will. I could tell you that now. <laughs> well, I, I'm waiting. I kind of hope one of them will throw them up, pick them up, and throw it across the room. I'll certainly not run out the door. I'll be like, do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, as you were saying about the lamps, like we've been there a couple of times. The first time we went, we got a lot of activity. Second time, we didn't get as much, and when we did finally start getting it, unfortunately, we were disturbed by people who were just didn't explore. Tried to yeah, pick up yeah. where we kind of broke off thing. All communication was lost, and it was it was quite annoying more than anything. Like, having that activity kind of kicking off and starting up, and then having to just kind of killed it, and we're like, well, there's no point in trying anymore. We'll kind of we'll leave it as it is. We can come back another time. But, Samantha had quite a lot of activity there. The last time, Samantha, when you were there, I don't know if you could hear me, because she's traveling. Yeah, I can hear you. Um, when we were just exploring, we were planning on doing an investigation. We got a lot of stuff in the daytime. Like, um, we had stuff get chucked at us. Um, my friend's bag got tugged. We saw shadows in the cellar. And then... Um, and something like grave in my ear and it almost made me faint. It, it's like it drained the energy out of me and I had to leave at that point. Yeah. So you like, back when I worked in care, I worked with a few nurses that worked in like, Lance Castle. They worked in the Woodley as well, but unfortunately the Woodley has been torn down and it's on your, it's all houses now. But like I worked with a lot of nurses that worked there. And I get told so many stories about the place and kind of some of the people that live there and all that. And um, I've actually, when I've been in doing an, an investigation, some of the names of patients that have done certain things in the place have came through when I've asked questions of, did they do this? And obviously, like, it just kind of it, it proved the stories to be true of what actually happened in, in Lennox and unfortunately mm -hmm. I couldn't do it for Woodley. I'd love to. Like, it was meant to be so so bad in there, but unfortunately they told it didn't about pussies. Yeah. Um, I know. It is what it is, but Another I mean, place. <clears throat> I'm sorry that I never uh, found it 10 years ago or so when it was still relatively good, Nick, you know, it was just a, a shell. I, I'm always late to the party, unfortunately. I've <laughs> kicked myself. I keep saying I'll never miss a place like that again. And mm -hmm. since last January, two, two Januarys ago, near enough, there's that house in Inverkip where that, that special needs lassie went missing. What was her name? I can't remember. I thought I'm going to investigate that house. My very first investigation. Fergus or something, I can't remember. She went missing, never been found, and her carers kept getting the money for her for years. Yeah. So I said, oh, right, I'm going to make that my, 
I, I'm going to make up my first investigation. Let's go. And I've been doing it as a bloody JCB sitting in a pile of rubble. And I thought, I'm not doing this again. I'm, if you sleep in, you miss it. Well, that's it. That. I mean, those places. You're no that, that, what is it? You're no fast, you're last. That's it. That. Last. <laughs> those, those places out there, I'd love to get into. Like, obviously, it's places that are just too well shot up. But it is what it is. It's, it's your potluck at times. Like, there's, <clears throat> there's places like, obviously, the hospital in Paisley. People have got in, people have been caught trying to get in. Sometimes all the entrances are shut. It's just your luck when you go and whether you're going to get in or not. I drove by yeah. a place and it's been dubbed up, but I've seen Aye. some photos inside it too, and I want to get in there, but it's, the boat house is right next to it. It's a hard one yeah. again. The boat houses, there's, only, there's one way in, but people, people are phoning the police when you take that way in. So it's it's just no worth getting hassle off the police. Thinking you are going to cause damage when you really know, but you can't really prove it. No, I know. Stopped a few times with police coming in. As long as you've not got any tools in your bag that you break, as long as it's just your camera gear and your equipment, that's no. it. I've always got half of it. Right. Um, yeah, most of them good, actually. The... <clears throat> You know, as long as they, you're not causing any damage and they say, well, you know, they have to tell you to go away. But I would say majority of the time they're usually pretty okay. They just tell you you hate to leave. No. As long um, as you've not got implements on you that suggest that you're going to do harm or steal. Yeah. Well, that's that. That's the thing. I'm ex police. <laughs> there we go then. <laughs> So, so um, I mean, essentially, it could be a housebreaking, but I think they'd let you away with it if you've got your cameras and your um, paranormal um, <laughs> paraphernalia. <laughs> um, has, has any of you guys had any like, spiritual attachments happen to you after you've been out doing your investigations? No, we, we, we tend to thank the spirit before we go and stuff and kind of yeah. call it, and that's an end to this, so thanks. I we'll maybe come, bye. Mm -hmm. Maybe come back again sometime I, if you allow us, but thanks for this time. And uh, I tend to do a, um, a, like a protection, well, no spell, but, you know, as, as a protection prayer before I yeah. start with spirit. And when I finish, I tend to do a cleanse so as to make sure that spirit knows it's staying where it belongs and it's not coming with me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fair enough. Like, um, Just a little bit self-protection, really. Definitely. Like my brother, when he used to come out with us, um, his, his wife's um, like a medium, so she had wrote like, kind of, a wee kind of thing for him to do for when we kind of opened up and we would get there and then we'd close down when we were leaving and stuff like that. But from time to time, you would open up, you'd be halfway here, but he's not fucking, he's not shot, I was done. And everybody's looking, going, why well, need it, hasn't it? It's like, well, I'm just taking a new pal here tonight. <laughs> mm. But no, I um, wear this thing. I tend to wear that. I've got right. blessed that with, so as if I'm wearing that, nothing can harm us or, or attach on us. And if you do forget to close down properly and stuff, then. I've always got the comfort that I've had this on and it will work for us, you know. It yeah. seems to have been all right so far. So whether Maybe it's he wants to it follow you him, that's what it is. Yeah, that's that. Someone <laughs> <laughs> eats Danny falling him. Oh <laughs> just remember I've caught that one camera. <laughs> <laughs> um so obviously we've kind of covered a couple of things here. One of the questions, like, see, when I was kind of setting all of this up, I was sitting, I wrote out 16 questions to go between me and Riga. Obviously, I'm not going to ask all 16 because it's it's not, it's never got to work. But one of the questions that I did write that I feel that like I'm going to use quite often is, see, with a poltergeist, do you feel like we are in a constant state of agitation and anger? 
Or do you think they feed off in negativity of one or everybody that's in the room at that time where we are present? Can I speak about I this? Because I've had personal experience of this. In nice. 2018, I believe I had a, a poltergeist or a presence in my house. He would unplug, or sh I, I think it was a he, would unplug um, sockets from the wall when nice. we were hoovering. We had my my husband's uh, father and father's drive. That's that poltergeist <laughs> activity again. It's probably that. It's amazing how that happens. <laughs> well... Nice. I don't think it, but we, that last place we were at, we, we got a bit of poltergeist activity. And we weren't, it wasn't feeding off at any negative. You know, I think we were excited. Maybe <laughs> we were giving out a form of kind of something for it to, a bit of positivity, something for it to feed off and kind of play up to because it, yeah. it went mental at that time. Uh, it, it was really good. Uh, and then it, it topped off at the next place where we went to doing on the borders. It just went crazy. But we sometimes you get the they get oh no, I'm you, I'm getting hair some places I've not had it for years, man. You feel <laughs> hair standing up, but you you kind of stay rooted there. In fact, that place we went to doing doing in uh, I don't want to say where it is, but doing sort near the borders. Uh, we actually, before we even started our investigation, we get ran out of the place because we thought right. there was a crowd of Neds in smashing it up and there was nobody in the place. It was actual activity. Jesus. So we were we were going out and we were just like, let's just take stock here. We've travelled two hours to get here. We're not running out like a bunch of Jessies. No. We've got, we've got to get back, back in. in. No, no, nobody's ever done that expert, a, a, a paranormal investigation here. We haven't seen one. We've, we're the first. Let's get back and by God, I were getting were touched, we we're getting stuff flung about still, and it was a great, a great day. But uh, it's I wouldn't say we were it was feeding off a negative energy, but we were all rather excited, you know. Yeah. It was a, a pigeon game. Negative energy. <laughs> bloody pigeon <laughs> appeared right <laughs> at my head. And, whew, <laughs> got a fright then. That was about like, my last investigation at Buchanan Castle. We were all kind of, we were doing an EVP session downstairs and all the torches were out, everything was black. And I'm stood in the corner and I was like, a fucking bat. It's a fucking <laughs> bat in front of me. And the thing flew right out of my head. And I heard of me going, you fucking bastard. And fucking running across the room. Oh, bloody bats. <laughs> Couldn't find my torch or nothing. Just running across that room in the pitch dark, hoping I wasn't going to fall and kill myself. Folk would have been back investigating me. Seems to be the standard reply, right? Enough, yeah, F and B, you know. Like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, the that standard close to me, I felt the <laughs> you know? Right, Heather, so, you're back again. We, we, uh, Heather, we never got your last uh, sentence there about what you were saying about Portuguese, so if you want yeah, to Yeah, um, we were lying in our bed and the radio, it was three o'clock in the morning and the radio in the hall went off its cell and we just, and it was, the music was really low and it just gradually got louder and louder and louder. Now, my husband, and he will tell you, thinks this is a load of shite. He will say it's a load of shite until all this started happening. He could not believe the things that were happening in our house. It was unbelievable. But at the time I was grieving. Nice. So I think it was feeding off negativity or that kind of negativity yeah or it, I, it, at times I also felt that it was my dad letting me know that he was still here around me and was helping me to get through yeah. it um, because I mean it was just it was amazing I, I, I wish to God I'd known you guys then I'd have brought you to my house and said right sit in here and just wait because it's going to happen it's going to kick ass <laughs> It's, it was really good stuff. Um, it's all settled in now, but I'm in a better place. Yeah. No, it's, it's so one of it the things. can run off that, your emotions. It was one of the kind of ones I was like, I mean, is it, a, is it the right way to go about the question? Is it no? I was like, I can ask it, and if, if it doesn't kind of work out, I can always 
kind of go about asking it in another way and kind of reword it and stuff like that. But I found, like, obviously, asking it straight out as, do you find they're constantly angry or do we get angry through yeah. negativity? Like, whether it could be, like, your, your average Casper just kind of floating about, then it's angry, and then somebody comes in in a pure mood, stomping and slamming things and... We Casper's like, I mean, this is my kitchen. Don't slam my cupboards. And grabs a couple of doors and starts right. slamming it like that. You don't like it when I slam it at three in the morning. Don't slam it at 12 in the afternoon when I'm trying to sleep. I think there will be, there is um, occurrences where you have got a spirit that um, is a bit perturbed that somebody else has moved in to their place. They don't like it. So they want mm. them to move out. Um, and sometimes that's because that, that, that spirit doesn't actually realise it's moved on. Um, but I think you can also generate spirit through emotions, through, you know, if you're having downtimes, that's their way of showing you they're still around you. Yeah. It can be scary. It wasn't scary to me, even even going through all that, I just, I was never scared. The tough day, I reckon what the tough day to scare me, but... <laughs> um, the, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> But even they're probably got want to fight back. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I the pro that would scare me. That would scare me. But then saying that, I've had that. I, I've yeah. been picked up, and thrown across a room. But I have had an experience where I have lain in a in a spare room in my uh, niece's bedroom um, house, and I felt a hand going round my waist. I was on my own, and I went to move, and the next thing I felt a slap on my face, as you know any hand was made contact with my face yeah and i put the light on and nobody was there Jeez. i then phoned my i phoned my husband because he was at spire hospital getting a, an operation done mm -hmm. and i told him about it and says well you've just been worried you've been upset and you know calmed me down i went to go to sleep again same thing again hand in the waist and i actually spoke to spirit and said i'm just getting up i'm just going to go to the toilet I'll just be five minutes thinking I was talking to somebody. It actually yeah. let me go. I got out of the room and I didn't go back in. That's when I was scared of it. And it was, it was so real. So I've had a few experiences like that. Seems like it. Um, Stuart, what's your ultimate aim for your team? Like, what, you use, like, what do you want as your ultimate Thing happened for you. Well, at the start, it was just to go and kind of learn the ropes a wee bit, you know, because I'd never done a paranormal investigation up until tw uh, January 2020, so uh, I hadn't a clue what to do. Mm -hmm. and since I've got into a bit, being an ex wedding photographer uh, with over 100 weddings, and then I've always wanted to get into videography, yeah. and I've started doing a lot of videos. Well, still learning, I've got a lot to learn, but what what the aim is is to make each one of these wee adventures like a proper documentary type film, a 30 minute documentary or something, uh, with good sound, good audio, good content. If nothing happens uh, paranormal wise, fair enough, you know, uh, we're not going to fake anything, but my aim is to possibly get, there's a lot of teams being spotted on Prime and that and get, get, get a break. So maybe if we produce something within the next year or so, it comes together a bit more professionally. We maybe get spotted and maybe maybe get a wee shot somewhere on getting shown somewhere. That's, that's my ultimate aim. Ultimate aim is having fun and going to good places and stuff that you'll never see before. You know, that, that's the first and foremost. Yep. If anything comes out of that, so be it. No, that's fair. Now, I'd, obviously, I'm going to go back a wee bit, like you were talking about doing the Blind Spirit Box. Now, I don't know if you've seen the video of when we were down in Dalkaharan Castle. We, oh, we carried out a kind of... A, we'd done a Blind Spirit Box in a sense, but it was called a Double Blind Spirit Box. And yeah, yeah. what we'd done... Have you heard about it? Yeah. I think yeah. we mentioned that on your last podcast. I... Yeah. 
Um, I'd certainly, I, I certainly would suggest giving it a try. I mean, the, the, it's different. Like, seeing knowing that, like, say, for instance, Samantha and Kerry are both kind of doing a blind spout box, seeing known for a fact that you're not going to be asking any questions, but Samantha's saying hello and Kerry's like, hi there, and, like, we start having that kind of communication. But it's... It's amazing to see because, like, what if we're just having that conversation on a daily basis? But there's no nobody there to prove that evidence until we go. We go well. We'll do a blind spot box, but we'll do it as a team. We are two people are done. Nobody's going to ask a question, and you still just got to blab at each other. I mean, it, it was great to do, but like, I felt I was only on it five, five, ten minutes. But regardless like, I mean, you were on it for like 25, 30 minutes. It just, time flew by because you, you didn't notice. You just, I haven't seen so quick. And there was things I was saying I didn't notice, I'd said. And again, I mean, a week down the line, I'm still waiting. I am still waiting for Riggett to show me this video. I mean, losing my leg. I mean, that's been about three, four weeks now and he's still not showing me this. Plenty of you have been framed. I know. But no, I, I certainly would. I'm so glad that um, that team from obviously South Africa telling us about it. I mean, hats off to them. It was a great idea. Obviously, we're just a team of two. So like, we've got to set a video camera down and go, right, well, I'm going to blindfold myself while you do it. And we've got to see what we get here. We're sitting in a room on our own and they've there is protection. Whereas like, you guys, there's a few of you, so if something goes wrong, you can go up and go, right, look, come off, we need to go. Um, whereas they don't have that. So, I mean, hats off to you guys for being that, that kind of brave and straight to it. I mean, it's, it's amazing. Like very good, it sounds that like a very good plan. Mm -hmm. I think we'll be plagiarising that idea as well. Then, and give Definitely. That a shot, I mean, <laughs> it, it's really good. I mean, I, I certainly would use it more often. Um, try to think. I, um, as I say, I don't want to ask all the questions I've got written down here. Um, there was one question. It was a kind of, I don't know if it was a joke kind of question or if I'm going to take it serious, but obviously you believe in like, the paranormal scene, but do you believe, like, do you believe in like, aliens or anything like that? I mean, it's pure out there random question, but no. Yeah, 100%. Egyptology says states that there is alien forces that came, um, and I, and my, me and my husband have actually watched an awful lot of things on YouTube, um, are surrounding you know the Egyptian hieroglyphic hieroglyphic. I can't even say it. Hieroglyphic. Can you say it? Hieroglyphics. That's the one. <laughs> <To be> specific. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and there, there seems to be quite a lot of evidence to suggest that there is a higher source, whether yeah. it be from aliens. I mean, where did they get all their tools to manifest a lot of the buildings, the work Aye. that they did? I mean, there's there's a lot of suggestion put out there that it had to come from another source because uh -huh. we can't find evidence of, you know, the tools that they used to create all these pyramids. Yeah, exactly. Or oh, these crypts. I bet and all the hieroglyphics. Like that. Nah, nah. All the hieroglyphics yeah. have got like alienish, <laughs> alien type. Yep. You know, right. pictures. Um, I do. I think there's something else out there. Yeah. It's me. My, it's, it's a pity. My brother was now on here tonight because uh, he is obsessed with aliens. He's <laughs> uh, studied and uh, quite in depth. Right, and I could sit up and tell him all night. He's really, he's really, he knows his stuff. Uh -huh. Um, but I definitely, with all the stuff he's told me and the stuff that I've watched as well, there is definitely alien life somewhere. There's got as to be, says, as yeah. I always say, there's got to be something on somewhere. Like we can't be the yeah. only habitable planet for maybe for us, but. There's got to be able to be a habitation on some other planet through some other source of living. Obviously, something we can't do, they can. 
Thì em anh có cái bộ tôi vào ở áo bắc quá mình nghĩ thế nào yeah. and it doesn't help but I sat and started watching South Park again last night like yeah. the rest of the episode when the aliens came I was like nah do you know what I'm going to have to ask a question tonight <laughs> <laughs> that's good enough yeah. so, I don't know how many of them ride be- pedal cycles like E.T. but you never know <laughs> <laughs> you never know um, you never know <laughs> I'm going to ask like, one other question, then we'll kind of we'll kind of try and wrap it up for you. Um, so obviously, there's been a lot of people, like, a lot of famous people, have passed away, like during the past couple of generations and stuff. But uh, everybody that's passed away over like, the years, who would you love to try and make communication with? And what would be your reason for it? That's a quite a clever question, I know. I know, for uh, Sunday night as well, eh? Gonna, I thought that you were going to ask. Elvis has manifested himself to me. Who? Elvis. Right. Yes. We were at the Glasgow Spiritualist Centre in Socky Hall Street in Green, uh, Glasgow <laughs> doing a, a workshop. Uh-huh. A kind of mediumship workshop thing for the weekend. And this guy done trans mediumship. In front of us, oh, there was about eight of us, and he sat out in the middle of the, the floor and went into a trance, and you're kind of looking at him. It took about 15, 20 minutes in total. It took about a good five minutes to go out. Yeah. And I'm concentrating on him, and he, he turned into somebody else. That was, he, that's Elvis! And it wasn't <laughs> the kind of fat Elvis, the, the fat hamburger Elvis, it was a young Elvis. <laughs> I'm like, that's bloody Elvis. And I'm like, ah, should I mention it? And so what, when they came to and, I, and they were coming around and say, what did you experience? And I says, well, I don't want to sound after anything, like, but I seen Elvis. And the last said, so did I. The youngest. <laughs> so that's that. But who would I want to? I don't know. Well, the only thing I... I Anybody. Mean... Anybody. Anybody. You're just easy. I would say um, Princess Diana for me. Definitely. Funny you saying Princess Diana because when she mm-hmm. died, my ex-husband come into the bedroom. I was sleeping because I'd been on the night shift, and he says, "You'll never guess what happened." And I says, "Princess Diana's dead." And he went, "How did you know?" And I, I dreamt it. That's weird. Doesn't matter. Right? <laughs> but I totally dreamt it. Yeah, I, I would love to to speak to Princess Diana because I feel. She had so much to say. She had a story to tell. And I feel it would be lovely just to get in touch with her so she could tell her story properly. Because I don't think she ever got the chance to really no. speak about stuff that happened to her. And, you know, she, she touched upon a lot of stuff, but I don't think she truly got what she wanted across. Yeah. Samantha, I don't know if you're still with what about you? Actually, a big fan of celebrities, such. The celebrities I am a fan of, still alive. Um, so, I'm you mean I've got to go kill one and so communicate? Sorry, oh. what? So, I've got to go and kill one of your celebrities so you can communicate with them? Ah, oh, yeah, do that. <laughs> cool. Hey, I'll check my diary. I, I agree with you. <laughs> check my diary. I, I, I like celebrities. Story. No. <laughs> I mean, for myself, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of a hard one because I'd love to. I'd, I'd love to try and speak to like a like a singer, like maybe like Freddie Mercury or I don't know, like 
two pack or something like that. Somebody, somebody that's been through a lot. Like obviously, two pack could obviously it's still one of the big stories. Is he, is he really alive? Is he not? But I'd love to kind of figure that out. But if I wasn't to go down that line, then I don't know. I'd have to kind of go further back. Maybe try like. I don't know, like, can I get down the Viking route and see if I can maybe make communication for some of the black men and obviously kind of find out more on how how real life was back then. Like, obviously, all we ever see is, like, programmes that kind of depict of what they've done, but, like, what if, what if there was things that they've done that will never actually be told as a story because nobody's got a rec- like, um, recorded history on what they done. Like, obviously, you've got like, a show like Vikings and all that. Like, obviously, it shows all the, all the raids that they've done all over the world and stuff like that, but that just, there's got to be more to it and why, like, where did it all begin for them? What, what made them want to be what they were? I'd just love to kind of, I just love all my history kind of thing, so all that kind of stuff interests me. Actually, that makes sense. That'd be quite a good idea. I like the sound of that. I'm going to have to just go down and sit on the middle of the beach and logs one night and try and communicate with a random Viking. <laughs> Definitely. That sounds like a good plan. I'd be <laughs> up for that. Fucking logs would be looking at me going, look at that fucking psychopath sitting talking to himself. I think yeah, I'd like to try and speak to Doris Stokes. Who? Huh? Doris Stokes. Right. Do you know who that yeah. is? No. Very good, renowned medium. Ah, right, she wrote okay. books. And so I would like to speak to her and ask her how she managed to develop and how she was open or more open to spirit than most people were because she had, I mean, she was she was a medium to the stars. She um she did she did a, a lot of work, a lot of good work, helped the police and criminology. Yeah. Um. I would like to to speak to her and ask her a few things about her development to help me. Aye. Well, that's it. Go Have your knowledge. Scott's looking over the wall there. He's that's a nice ceiling you've got, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened to Scott, by the way? I thought he was coming back on. I don't know, but he's fine actually turned this camera on right at the end. Scott's only going to answer one question. He's got a dinner in front of him. (laughs) (laughs) Oh well. Scott, we've been going about an hour and we're nearly done, so. Talking about people from the past, David Niven. Oh, yeah. He was... uh, he lived a life beyond belief and has so many stories to tell about people. It would be nice to pick his brains. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he David Never again. Was he on the, the, the mm-hmm. horror films? Mm-hmm. No, he, well, he was... He uh, the world in 80 days. He was also yeah. one at uh, Casino Royale, which was the spoof James Bond. And apparently he wrote a book that it was unbelievably funny and insightful about Hollywood. So I, I'd love to pick his brains. Incidentally, John Scott's were qualified videographer. He's been and got the honours for it. So if oh, anyone's wrong with the video, it's his fault. Ah, yeah, that's it. I'm going to blame him now. Got shite cameras. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> A good man doesn't, a good worker doesn't blame his tools. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you get caught on the work me. <laughs> keep, I just blame my team for anything that goes wrong. <laughs> um, no, it's like, I genuinely would love to be able to kind of communicate further with people that have obviously led out an interesting life here. Yeah, obviously, they've not been able to tell the full story in life. And obviously try and get it further out there. Like, I've seen on YouTube there's some guy, I can't remember his name, but like, he, 
he says it, he talks to all these dead celebrities and like he's done like Robin Williams and he's done Kurt Cobain and things like that. But he makes yeah. up sound banks with these people's voices. And I just I don't know. I don't know if I fully believe him. I don't know if it's just I wouldn't say it's a skeptic in me, it's more is he just doing it for viewers? Is he just doing it so that he can keep his content on his channel at a high where people are watching and going, oh, well, he spoke to Robin Williams, he spoke to the lead singer in the, um, Lincoln Park at Chester, who obviously killed himself. He spoke to these people, so he must, he must be able to do it. But he's building these sound banks himself, so he could easily be manipulating them himself. But I don't know. That's just just the way I see it. I mean, obviously, people could look at our videos when we post on YouTube and go, oh, we'll affect that. But it's just the way everybody's going to be. If they don't see it, and they, they have no way of proving it is fake or real, they're going to go down, well, straight away it's fake. I mean, mm-hmm. it could be real. It could be talking to these people who may have that connection and channel within himself. We don't know. But it's just that part of me goes in the eye. You can't be able to communicate with everybody. They're not going to just come to you. Yeah, they're, 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 they're really difficult, I think, for people to call to one. If they're going to be talk to anybody, I think they would be trying to communicate with people who have a connection, really, yep. personally, um, with, with any of them. But I don't know. It's, it's, I'm open-minded. You know, you just don't know. I yeah. think one of the things that we'll never know. But just going back, um, just I've been watching this thing on YouTube called, um, well, it's about life after death, and it's quite interesting. So um, called Death and Back, and it's really, really good. And I recommend that you guys watch it because there's a lot of good stuff on there, a lot of good experiences that people have had, and it's actually really good watch. I'll check it out. What's it called? It's called, um, It's you just type in Life After Death, and it's called Death and Back. The guy okay. who is it, uh, McMahon. Oh. Um, it's really, really good. It's interesting. It's in loads of parts. There's three parts, but they're quite long. So, right. But those experiences, and they're really, it's really good. It's really interesting. So, worth a watch. Oh, yeah, that's the one that I watched with you. I watched one of them with you. Part two. Yeah. Watch. Yeah. It's really good. Hi, Sam. <laughs> Just here. I've got my mini me. <laughs> Oh, I hear Katie. Hello. <laughs> but no, um, is there anything you guys want to ask, obviously, before we wrap everything up? Yeah, we'll point out. Sorry. Uh, you carry on. No, you go. Uh, just a point that we've we've got a, a plan coming up. We've got a live coming on uh, mm-hmm. on the stroke of Halloween. So... Can't, we can't give a location away until the night. Probably not give it away then as well because it's mm-hmm. a protected uh, location we're going to. But that was one of the ones we've been to. It's been really active before. So we're going to go there on the Saturday, the 30th right. of October and go live at midnight into Halloween and we're staying the night. So oh, we'll yeah. have various, various equipment in various rooms. We'll be locking off cameras in different rooms and sound, get a, a gallon EVP in various rooms as well, all, all at the same time. And we're, we're going to be live on our Facebook group. Mm-hmm. And if I've got enough views and like, if I've got enough members and likes on TikTok, we'll go live on there as well and Twitter or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like we'll go live as many platforms as possible. But essentially, we're making it as a documentary. We've got some B-roll footage, you know, me and Scott's been out working on this week, getting some getting some shots, getting the story of the build-up to it. So we're looking forward to being there that night and seeing what it comes, but we'll be live anyway from midnight Halloween. So that's that's oh, what 